Welcome, Linus. So now, as you have said, we're going to jump into application questions, and they're still based on the, on, the, on the parallel circuit. So the first question under application questions is asking us about potential difference. And we are asked, what is meant by a potential difference? So potential difference is the difference in amounts of energy that charge carriers have between two points in a circuit. So between two points in a circuit, the, the, the charge carriers will have different amount of energy, and that different amount of energy is called your potential difference. And our second question says, what instrument is used to measure potential difference? So what instrument do we use to measure potential difference? We need to always remember that in an electric circuit, we have an ammeter that is used to measure current. And current is measured in amperes, denoted by a capital letter A. Then our, our potential difference is measured by the instrument called a voltmeter. So we're using a voltmeter. We're using a voltmeter to measure potential difference, and the, the, that uh, po uh, voltmeter is going to measure the, the, that potential difference is measured in volts, denoted by, by capital letter V. And the second question, I mean, the third question says, how should the instrument mentioned above be connected in a circuit? So which circuit are we talking about? The parallel circuit. And we need to explain your response or our response. So the instrument, the voltmeter, should be connected in parallel. It should be connected in parallel. Why should it be connected in parallel? Because It has high internal resistance. So remember, if this voltmeter was to be connected in series, would actually be increasing the resistance in uh, the resistance of the circuit. But if it's connected in parallel, and remember we said, as we're adding more resistors in parallel, we are actually decreasing the resistance. So if our voltmeter is connected in parallel, that means its resistance is going to be decreased. The effective resistance of the circuit is going to be decreased. So therefore, which is why we are always going to be connecting our voltmeter in a, in a parallel connection so that we can decrease the resistance that comes with that particular a, a, a device. Then this question now wants us to draw two circuit diagrams that, that has uh, resistors that are connected in, in parallel. Diagram one must have three resistors connected in parallel with a battery consisting of four cells and a closed switch. And diagram two must have two resistors that are connected in parallel with a battery that consists of four cells and a closed switch. And then lastly, we need to now arrange the diagrams in, in, the diagrams in terms of increasing resistance and give a reason why we are arranging them in that particular manner. So question one or diagram one, we are going to draw a diagram that has three resistors and four cells. And they must be, uh, the, the resistors must be connected in parallel. So our cells will have, that's one, two, three, and then four. So we have one cell, two, three, and four, and all of which are going to now make up the battery. They are connected, and they are, we should have three resistors that are connected in parallel. Remember, if your resistors are connected in parallel, that means it provides or they provide an alternative pathway for the, for the current to flow. So I have my resistors, all of which are connected. And I also need to have my switch that I'm going to have there, and it's closed. So I have my resistors connected, three of them connected in parallel. Why? Because now as the current is moving from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, when it gets to this point, it has to divide. 
Some of the current will go through this resistor, some will go through the second resistor, and the other remaining parts of the current will go through the third resistor. However, after, after having passed through the resistors, once they get to this point and meet up again, they will be equal to the total current of the entire circuit. That means the sum of the current passing through uh, this resistor, that resistor and this resistor will be equal to the total current of the entire circuit. So therefore, the current is going to divide as we have said. Then diagram number two, now we are drawing two resistors connected in parallel, still having four cells and a closed switch. So first cell, second cell, third cell, and fourth cell. And now here I must have two resistors. One, two. They are connected in parallel and I also need to have a switch. Again, the current as it is moving from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, once it gets to this point, it has to divide. Some will go through this resistor. The other one will go through the other resistor. Now remember that current, when it divides, it divides proportionally. That means if one of these two resistors has a higher resistance as compared to the other one, that means the current passing through that resistor is going to be low. So that means, if, resist, if we label this as resistor number one and resistor number two, and we are told that resistor number one has a higher resistance than resistor number two, then the current passing through R1 or the resistor with the highest resistance is going to be low. So current will always choose the path with the least resistance. So more of the current will go through or will go towards the, uh, the resistor that has the least resistance. So that's how our current is going to divide proportionally. Then the last question that we have, it says, we need to arrange the diagrams in terms of increasing current. Uh, in, in terms of increasing current strength and give a reason for our arrangement. So remember, we had two diagrams. One had um, three resistors and the other one had two resistors. So diagram number one had three resistors and diagram number two had two resistors. So we should know that when we are adding more resistors in parallel, just like in diagram number one, there's more resistors in parallel. If there's more resistors in parallel, the total, the total resistance of the circuit is going to be decreased. Now, if the resistance of the circuit decreases, that means the current strength of that particular circuit is going to increase, which then now translates to diagram one having the highest current strength as compared to diagram number two, because diagram number one has more resistors connected in parallel. So arranging them in terms of, of the increasing current strength, a diagram number one is, or let's just write a diagram, one is going to be greater in terms of the current strength is going to be greater than diagram number two. Why more resistors or more resistors equals a less current. And the opposite is true. Less resistors equal more current. So that's what we actually are, are, are trying to answer here, that in this particular case, diagram number one has more resistors. And because it has more resistors, oh no, if it has more resistors, it is going to have more current. So more resistors means less resistance in the circuit. Less resistance in the circuit. Which then means a more current. More current strength. 
in the circuit. So as we're adding more resistors in a circuit, the total resistance of the circuit is going to be decreased. And because the resistance decreases in a parallel circuit as we add more resistors, the total current strength of that particular uh, circuit is going to be increased. So with all of that said, we're just going to go for a quick short break and I will see you just after this. <music>